Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we are checking out Unity's just released Spaceship Visual Effects Graph demo. All about showing off their new visual effects graph and HD render pipeline in action. And in this video, I'm actually going to start off with a screen cap of the entire demo in action so you can check out what we are talking about and then come back around the three minute mark and we'll jump into a behind the scenes look at the project files. So here it is, all the eye candy and all of its glory, the new Spaceship demo. Hello, Baker. Can you hear me? I hope you made it safely down there, and I hope you can hear me. I can't hear anything. The whole system's busted. There you are. I see you in the monitor now. Good to see you well. Security check in progress. Access granted. There's a secure shell terminal there, just where you are. Put in the coordinates and get us to the landing site. You have to get us out of here now. Hurry up and get us to the landing site. Select landing target. There it is. Hurry up, we don't have much time. <sighs> Hurry up. You have to get us out of here now. Landing target located. Attention. Multiple weapon signatures detected. Oh my god. I'm so big. Shield taking yeah, damage. Yeah. Power down to 32%. Substantial damage to shield. Power down to 17%. Shield power down to 9%. Core energy depleted. Sorry. Shield has been deactivated. Immediate evacuation. Proceed to the tenders. So that was it. Uh, and now you may have noticed that some of the frame rates got a little jittery and that was for two reasons. First off, it was set at fixed 30 frames per second. I don't know why they made that decision. This demo runs exactly the same across my 1050, my 970, my 1080. Um, so yeah, and unfortunately once I started recording it, for some reason that impacted the performance even more. So you'll have noticed they did lock the frame rates to 30 frames per second. So anyways, on to the details about this demonstration. Now as you saw, it shows off a number of effects using the effects graph for doing things like um, full-blown UI work some of a lot of the stuff you used to do in the past with scale form and you saw a ton of scripted special effects as you went through each level or scene so we head on over to the unity blog this is where the announcement is all about it uh, basically they say they've released a video now they're gonna release it out to us you do need the newest version of uh, unity 2019.2 speaking of which I actually tried it with the most recent alpha release and it broke the joy of the new modular setup of unity use the most current release version only otherwise you're going to run into some pain points here um, you can see here it is all special effects from this um, spaceship demo are made using the visual effects graph from simple environmental vfx to more complex augmented reality and holographic ui hud to a gorgeous reactor core effect now as you saw we did the overlay when you first started up um, then there's like when it opened the door and authenticated you normally you would have done that kind of stuff in scale form or something like that in the past now visual effects graph is kicking in for that kind of functionality 
and you can see some screenshots from it. You already saw this in the videos. Um, it targeted a 30 frames per second on a PlayStation 4 at 1080p. Unfortunately, it also locked you to that. Uh, it demonstrates some things like half resolution translucent rendering, octagon particles, simplified lighting model, the simple lit for HD render pipeline enables disabling properties of BRDF, diffuse lighting, specular lighting, shadow, and cookie reception, and ambient lighting by selecting only features you want to see. You can decrease the lighting computation cost to closer to none. For instance, particle can be lit using only light probes by selecting simple lit translucent model, then disabling everything except ambient lighting. This optimization was chosen for many environmental effects that did not require a lot of high frequency lighting. If you want to go ahead and grab this guy once again, I highly caution you to grab the most current person, like, actual release, not a beta or an alpha release that's in the future if you want to make this thing work. You'll also need to go ahead and clone it from GitHub. All the source code is up on GitHub. You need to have LFS installed. By the way, I also ran into a number of errors from GitHub today. I'm not sure what's going on. Kept getting uh, smudge errors, I believe it was, um, on one machine and not another. But if you need to download the whole thing, they've actually got all of the zip files available. You can also download the uh, actual just executable. So if you just want to play this yourself on your own machine, you'll see here again, it is locked to frames per second, 30 frames per second. Um, it runs on an, what, an i5, the GTX 1050 as about the minimum with eight gigs of RAM. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So if you're interested, the source code is available. You can grab it over on GitHub. I will, of course, link all of this stuff in the linked article down below. It comes in at about, uh, well, the, the executable is 500 megabytes. The project in the zip form extracts out to about being three gigs in size. So do expect it to take some time and also expect it to take some time when you first load it into Unity. Speaking of which, when you do load it into Unity or load it into Unity, the really cool thing that they've done with this is a guided tour. So you see here, we've got this window pops up when you first load this project. And you see, you can load up the main menu or the um, spaceship itself. I didn't actually show you the main menu in the that demo. Uh, but what we want to do is jump into the spaceship section. So you can click here and it will load up the spaceship scene. Now, the cool thing is there's also a UI for this as well. So when we head on over to the next section in uh, just one second, it's loading up right now. This is actually a fairly sizable uh, scene that it's opening up. So we'll give it a couple of seconds to load up and I'll pause. I'll be right back. Okay, so about 20 seconds later, here we are. So you notice this window actually changed as our scene opened. So in the background here, you can see the scene is in fact open. Uh, something is not happy, so let's give it some time to speed up. Okay, so that finished loading. You can see now I can actually move this window here. And we've got another selection of things here. So you can see it's broken down into different categories. So we can see instructions on how to build the player or how to actually compile this thing. And then we've got demo scripted events and visual effects here. So if you want to learn about specific visual effects, such as the floating dust, you can click here and you see it's broken down even more. So you, of course you could close all this and navigate the project however you want. But it's basically giving you a guided tour of what you are seeing here. So if you want to go ahead and see the visual dust effects in the VFX graph, come on over here, you can go open VFX graphs and it will open up that specific effect for you. So here we go, we'll let it load up. And here you can see the VFX graph in action. Now I'm not gonna get into this, um, it's way beyond the scope of this video, but you can see it is a very advanced system for queuing up uh, special effects and such. So that's again, what this demo, demo is all about showcasing. And I think it did a pretty good job on that regard. Now at the same time, we can also go up here to the event system. So the various different things that happen. So as we were walking through, you know, there was that galaxy view or the, um, under attack, remember when we got the under attack part? Well here it will automatically jump forward to that part. Um, so I could zoom out, there you see in the background that spiraling off in control. And then over here you've got jumps to, so we've got the director, so we can see here, jump in and see the sequence of events that are being controlled there in the uh, director components. Or if we wanna see the uh, VFX that are going on, we got two sets of VFX. Uh, we've got again the shake missile event, and so on. So it's all nicely navigated and um, uh, curated, I guess, for you. So if you want to come in here and kind of figure out how the director is used to splice scenes and timelines together, or the VFX and how the VFX graphs are used, it's all right here. And you can just navigate in using this menu of systems. So if you just want to come in here and try to figure out how this stuff all works together, you can. And here we go. We're going to come in and this is going to be a much more complex VFX graph. And you get an idea of the kind of complexity you're dealing with here. And yeah, so you see it comes in here. We start off with uh, nucleus scale, ask initial position. 
uh, compute four Bezier positions, the electric arcs are calculated, and so on. So we're spawning some particles off, and that is kind of how these graphs work. So you can create really complex VFX using this graph-like visual scripting language. You've got the inputs over here. And again, the thing that I find really cool with this setup is again that they've curated it with this, this guided system. Now again, you can just shut this down if you wish. If you don't want to be navigated through, you can just get rid of it, and you're on your own. You can navigate through through this guy however you wish. And again, it's a pretty straightforward structure. So again, all your various different scenes are in here. So if you want to learn about that main menu I didn't show you, just come on in here, open it up, and it is a traditional scene. Now I'm in timeline view, that doesn't help as much. So here we go, there is the main menu. Like so, yeah, so eventually we'll go over there. You see the text overlay of the main menu. And yeah, that is kind of the, the project on a whole. I gotta say, I, I'm actually pretty impressed with this one with the one exception. So it, it does do a good job of showcasing the new scripted functionality, how you can use it for overlays or um, you know heads up displays and similar, and for scripting pretty amazing special effects in the scenes. And it's given you really complex examples to dig into. And again, it did a good job of actually showcasing and walking you through these things. The only thing that I just can't get is why did you lock it to 33, like to that 33 millisecond or 30 frames per second update rate? Because it just makes it look like it's performing way worse than it actually is. Again, the footage I captured today was on my 970. And when I ran it on my 1050 and my 1080, it was, it was the identical experience. I actually ran it at 1080 at 4K, no problems whatsoever but it's capped at that 30 frames per second. So it does make it look artificially slow, which was a very strange decision and, and hopefully one that maybe they can release a version that doesn't have that limitation. But anyways, it does give you an idea of the graphic fidelity that we are starting to see from Unity. And I do want to know, are you impressed? Does this kind of pique your interest towards Unity? Or you could use this potentially for, um, you know, UI work in the future or special effects in your world in the future? Or is it this kind of, splitting or fragmenting of Unity between like high def render pipeline and the standard render pipeline and the VFX plugin and modules and trying to get all this stuff to work and not be so fragile. Is it frustrating you and kind of leading you away from Unity? I'm interested in hearing what you think and what you thought of this demo in general. All right, that's it for now. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.